Connelly. I started making these videos at home for my students who are in fifth grade so that they could keep on learning. And then I decided that I'm gonna make them public for everyone and I'm gonna take requests so that everyone can learn at home. So if you have a topic that you want me to cover, please email me at connellymathathome at gmail.com and I'll get to work on a video that would help you, your friends, if you're a parent, I wanna help your child. Let's keep as many students learning at home as possible. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make several multiplication videos. I'll put them in a playlist on my channel. I'll do one strategy at a time, then I'll combine all the strategies in one so we can compare them and see what's going on. And then we, I'll go over the standard algorithm for multiplication. So the, on this playlist, if you wanna see many different strategies, just watch more than one video. I didn't wanna make any video too long. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to start with going over breaking both numbers apart when we're multiplying. So we're gonna start with 53 times 24. And we're gonna be figuring out obviously what that equals. And when I'm doing multiplication, I always wanna give a story problem context. When you're learning these new strategies, friends, you really wanna keep track of all the moving parts. So I'm gonna say we're talking about 53 boxes and in each box I'm putting 24 oranges, okay? The other important thing that I want you to remember for the rest of your life is that when we're talking about the multiplication symbol, we mean we're saying groups of. So what am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out what is 53 groups of 24. So what is 53 boxes? That's my number of groups. Does this have many is in each group? I want to um, figure out the total. Okay, so we're going to start with breaking both numbers apart. So parents, I know you've seen your students start to draw what we call the area model for multiplication. This is a representation to help us keep track of our strategy. It's not the actual name for the strategy because we can um, break up the area model however we want, but let me explain that to you really quickly. So make it big so I don't run out of space. We have a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is length times width. So length times width. All right, the other thing that I want people to understand is that in a rectangle, opposite sides are equal. So when we're figuring out what to write in all the different boxes I'm about to draw, you wanna be thinking about the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, so this is equal to this, and I'll show you why that's important coming up. So, what we want students to do is we want them to break up the um, factors by place value, okay? So I have 53 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 50 here, and I'm put three here. So the width of this entire thing is 53. I'm gonna draw a line here to show that I'm breaking this up. So now I have 50 and 50, opposite sides are equal, and three and three. Okay, that's gonna be important coming up. So on this side, I'm representing our width with 53, and the length I'm going to represent with my 24 oranges. I'm also going to split it into place value, 20 and four. You see that the total um, length of this side is 24, and I'm gonna draw a line here to um, separate my two numbers. So what we wanna think about is finding the area of each little piece, and that will give us the area of the entire thing. So why do we break numbers apart like this? I'm gonna tell you. We have 50 times 20 here. So this box here, the um, width is 50 and the length is 20. So right now I'm thinking about just this box here. And these are numbers that your student feels really confident multiplying. They know five times two is 10. They know that this factor got 10 times greater and this factor got 10 times greater. I'm gonna do a whole video on that too because that's important. So they should know that their product is gonna get 100 times greater. So let me write it over here. They know five times two is 10. So they know 50 times 20, this factor got 10 times greater, 
so the product's going to get 10 times greater. This factor got 10 times greater, so the product's going to get 10 times greater again. If we make the product 10 times greater two times, it's going to be 100 times greater. So they've been learning about these relationships between numbers in class, and that's why we're having them break it up. Now it's efficient. There's not a lot of thinking involved when they have to do 50 times 20. So 50 times 20 gets represented in this box. The area of this piece that I did the darkness around is 1,000. So what have I done so far? Well, I'm going to tell you. So far I have 50 boxes. And inside those 50 boxes, I'm just going to draw these 50 boxes over here. I put 20 oranges. Okay? At the beginning of this, I said it's important to have a story problem because we want to make sure we make 53 boxes total and they each have 24 oranges in them. So right now, I've made 50 boxes and it only has 20 oranges in them. So let's make sure that we get those four more oranges in, that, in those boxes. So I'm going to come down here and let me highlight this for you in blue. Now I want to find the area of this piece here. So I, so you'll notice that this is not labeled, but this is. I know opposites are equal in a rectangle, so I know the width of this is 50 and the length of it is 4. So in this box, to find the area of this little piece, I know my width comes from here, it's 50, and 4 down here. So 50 times 4. Again, your student knows their facts. 5 times 4 is 20. So 50 times 4, they know, is 200. This factor got 10 times greater. My product gets 10 times greater. So now what, I, what have I done? In each of my 50 boxes, I have now put 24 oranges. So in 50 boxes, I have 24 oranges. How many oranges do I have so far? 1,200 oranges total. But I'm not done yet because I need three more boxes that each have 24 oranges. And so you see, there's still a couple steps to fi finish here. Okay, so let's think about this box over here. I can use a third color, that's always fun. Over here, we are going to be thinking about a width of three. And you'll notice that neither of the lengths is labeled, but we know opposite sides are equal. So what does this box represent here? It's going to be 20 times 3, which equals 60. Again, the reason we're breaking these up is because your student knows 2 times 3, so they know 20 times 3. And then, finally, fourth color, we have this little box down here, and you'll notice that it does represent the smallest portion. Um, so also, I've made three more boxes. I've put 20 oranges in each box, and now I know that I just need the four more oranges. Okay, so down here, opposite sides are equal, so it's 3 times 4, and you get 12 more oranges. And you notice I just put 4 more oranges in each box. So even though I separated all of these out, I still have 53 total boxes, 24 oranges were put in each box in all of these steps. So, where is our final answer? The final answer is the total area of this entire thing. Okay, so to find your final answer, students are going to take each subproduct, we call it. They're going to line it up carefully by place value so that there's no mistakes after all of this work when they're adding. And then they can add up using the standard algorithm for addition or any other strategy that they want to use to add. Oops, sorry, that's a two. So, what steps did we take? First, we broke up both numbers by place value. We broke it up into tens, 50, and ones, three. Same thing here, 20 and four. Then, we found the area of each box 
and then to find the total area of the entire thing, we added everything up. This is called um, breaking both numbers apart. And I want to show you something, one more example using the area model, and I want to show you something that kids might make a mistake with sometimes that we want to make sure we keep an eye out for as well. So students, if you're doing this, you need to recognize as well. All right, so we're still going to stick with boxes of oranges. I like boxes of oranges. That's what I do all the time. So let's do 33 groups of 21, and that will give us our total number of oranges. Okay, so this time I'm going to show you the area model. We're going to go a little bit quicker. Um, I'm also going to show you with equations what's happening, and I'm going to start with what kids want to do sometimes, and we want them to stop doing this. So sometimes our students are going to do this. All right, I'm going to multiply the tens together. And then I'm going to multiply the 1. So they multiply 30 times 20, and then they're going to multiply 3 times 1. And then they're going to say, my total is 603. This is a problem when, when that comes up a lot when we're breaking both numbers apart because we're supposed to be making 33 boxes of 21 oranges. But what have we done here if we only did this? We made 30 boxes that have 20 oranges, and then we made three boxes that have one orange. And that is not what we're trying to do. We need all 33 boxes to have all 21 oranges. So let's make sure we don't do that. Um, all right, so that is a no, don't do that. Let's go over the area model one more time. So we are going to set it up. You'll notice that, um, well, I tried to make the width a little bit wider because this is a larger number. So I'm going to put the larger number along the edge that I made a little bit longer. Obviously, my 30 piece is greater than my piece for three. And then I'm going to do 21 the same way. I've split it up into tens and ones. I'm going to ask myself, that I made that really small. I'm going to ask myself, what is the length and width of this piece? The length and width of this piece is 30 times 20, which you know is 600. Using our facts, 3 times 2, and going from there. Okay? We come down here, and we say, what is our width? It's 30. What is our length? It's 1. 30 times 1 equals 30. So sometimes students start to get comfortable they don't feel they need the area model representation and they just start writing equations down the side of their paper. So you can see so far over here, they've taken 30 boxes and they put 21 oranges in each box. Okay, so we say we see 30 boxes, 21 oranges so far there's 630 oranges. You can see that here, okay? So let's continue. Then we wanna find what is the area of this piece here. The width is three, the length is 20. So we have three times 20, sorry I wrote it so small, is 60. So now we're taking those three extra boxes and we're making sure we get 21 oranges in each. So students might be able to keep track of everything that's happening down here. Let me just make that a little bit better for us. Let's draw an arrow here. So here, our width is three, our length is one. So this piece here represents three times one. So I have those three other boxes. I wanna make sure I have 21 oranges in each box. And then you can add them up. Just be careful, I didn't do a great job of putting this lined up by place value. So if you're going to be doing equations, just make sure it's lined up by place value if you're gonna add down with the standard algorithm. So what we did, everyone, is we broke up both numbers. We used an area model representation, thinking about what's the length and the width of each um, box here. We got our sub products, and then we combined them all to find the area of the entire thing. 
So that strategy is called breaking both numbers apart. If you keep watching, I'm gonna go over keeping one number whole, which would be a strategy we wanna to move towards for more efficiency. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you like the next video too. Bye.